we're going to be using Prim's algorithm to find a minimal spanning tree of this graph. Um, uh, Prim's algorithm works on a weighted graph, and we know this is a weighted graph because there are numbers associated with each one of these edges. These numbers might reflect perhaps the, the cost to go from uh, uh, vertex D to vertex E, or perhaps it could be the distance or some other kind of numeric value. Um, the, the minimal spanning tree is a set of edges. All these edges need to touch all the vertices of the graph uh, such that the total weight of all those edges are as small as possible. So they are minimal. And that's what makes this the minimal spanning tree. Um, not all the edges may be used in the minimal spanning tree. And in fact, there might be more than one minimal spanning tree for a given graph. So here's how it works. Uh, since it's going to touch all the vertices, you need to start with one of them. So it doesn't matter which one you start with. I'm going to pick H to start with right here. And the next step is to find all of the edges coming out of that vertex that go to vertices I haven't been to yet. So in this case, it's going to be this edge 3 that goes to I, 4 that goes to F, and 4 that goes to E. Um, find the one that's the lowest and highlight it. So that's the one with 3. And I'm also going to highlight the vertex that it goes to. That's vertex I. So now we repeat. But this time we're going to use the set of all the vertices that I've now visited. So that's H and I. Find all of the edges coming out of those that go to vertices that I haven't been to yet. So that's the 2 here going to G the 4 going to F, and the 4 going to E. Find the lowest one. That's the 2 going to G. Highlight it. And we're also going to highlight the G to indicate that we have now visited that one. Uh, repeat. So we got the 4 going to A, the 6 going to B, the 5 going to F, the 4 going to F from H, and the 4 going to E from H as well. Now since there's a tie, we've got the 4 here going to A, the 4 going to F, and the 4 going to E. Uh, it doesn't matter which one we pick. Pick one at random. So I'm going to pick the one going to F. I'm going to highlight that one and circle the F. And we do this again. 4 going to A, 6 going to B, 5 going to F from G. Uh, I'm sorry, we don't do that one because we've already been to F. So don't consider that one. Uh, how about the 3 going to D, the 3 going to E, and the uh, 4 going to E from H? Uh, it looks like we've got 2 to pick from, these both these 3's here. So I'll pick uh, the D, pick that one, and then highlight the D. So we repeat again. Looks like it's going to be the 2 going to B from D. So I'll highlight that one. And then uh, we'll look again to see the edges coming out of these nodes. It looks like it's going to be the 2 going to A, which would be the lowest one. And now look again. We've got a 3 coming out of D going to C, and we have the 3 coming out of F going to E. All the other ones coming out of all my red nodes here are higher. So let's pick uh, C, the one coming out of D going to C, and the last one to pick is going to be this one going to E from F. So at this point, all of the nodes have been visited, so that means we now have a, a minimal spanning tree. So I should be able to hide the original graph, and you can see that this minimal spanning tree doesn't use all of the edges. Uh, nevertheless, it does visit all of the vertices, and uh, let's go and let's just add up how much all of these uh, came out to be. So we've got the uh, edge C, D with a weight of 3. We've got B, D with a weight of 2. We have A, B with a weight of 2. Uh, looks like D, F with 3, F, E with a weight of 
3 as well. GI 2 I H 3 and F H 4. If we add all these up, we've got uh, 5, 6, 7, 10, 13, 14, 15, 18, 22 as our the weight of our minimal spanning tree. So as I said, the the output of this algorithm is a set of edges. So it's uh, these that we've written here. It's the set of the edges. Uh, uh, excuse me, C, D, B, D, A, B, D, F, F, E, G, I, I, H, and F. H. That is a minimal spanning tree. And you, you can probably see that there were some places where we could have come up with a different minimal spanning tree. Like, uh, remember, I think it was about the third step or so where we had a choice between this edge with 4, this with 4, and this with 4. I happened to pick the one going from FH, but I could have just as well picked the one going from HE or from GA, and that would have resulted in a slightly different minimal spanning tree, but would have ended up with the same minimal weight of 22. So you can see that there were probably other places where I could have made a choice, but we would have ended up with this same number. So there we go. That's how to do Prim's algorithm to calculate a minimal spanning tree on a weighted graph.